Yo guys, so today's video is gonna be called Sword Losers and Yu-Gi-Oh. So uh obviously there's a ban list coming at any moment now, any day now, it can come. So there's no point in talking about market watches or any prices. Um obviously we can make another video tomorrow discussing you know should you be selling your cards should you be buying your cards obviously that's high risk high reward some cards are gonna skyrocket off the list and some cards are gonna crash in price off the list but today we're gonna talk about sword losers in Yu-Gi-Oh so we'll start off with I guess my anger losing in Yu-Gi-Oh so when I had gotten started playing again um, I was playing Trap Tricks, so as you can see, this was a long time ago when Trap Tricks was not good, but like kind of doing something. Didn't really do anything, but there was a time when Trap Tricks was okay. Um, that's like around Cash Tira format. So I had played this guy. He was playing Branded Chimera, and the deck was pretty good for a moment like for like one week Brandon Chimera is good maybe Fiendsmith Chimera is good now but um at the time I was playing Trap Trick he was playing Brandon Chimera we got into time he just attacked over my monster and then he won in time so that was a very long time ago and I was mad at him and um I've done a lot of reflecting I was like man that's kind of bad sportsmanship on my end um so the past matches that I do lose I'm honestly just like just showing a lot of love, showing a lot of support. Um, it's no big deal, cause I was in a five dollar tournament and I lost, so it's it's really no big deal. It's only a five dollar tournament. Um, some of my most recent losses. One was. I had lost to, Tenpai. In the mirror match, and the guy was like, like so, basically. We, I played it out, I lost, but like I showed good sportsmanship. And because I showed good sportsmanship, after the match, um, we sat down and talked. I was like, man, you know, these Fenris are not good. Because we played the, the Ten Pi Mirror match. I was like, man, these Fenris aren't good. Uh, he's like, yeah, I don't really like Fenrir. And I was like, you know, I, maybe I should start playing Dora Dora. And then, like, so next round goes, I win my next round. And then, uh, it's after after that next round. It's lunchtime. And he he buys a pizza for himself and he sits down and he eats it next to me. And we're just talking. He's like, "Yeah, I was bricking." He's like, "Maybe next time I am gonna play Dora Dora." And after he's done eating the pizza, there's like half a pizza left. It's so hard to eat a whole pizza. He's like, "Yo, do you want any of this pizza?" I was with my friend Kevin and I was with my other friend. They, they we were just hanging out. I was hanging out with Mark and Kevin and um, I was like, "No, I, I don't want any pizza." But like, if you could give some to my friends, that'd be cool. I had just met that guy that day, but like good sportsmanship can lead to great friendships. Um, so I met like so I benefited off of just being a good good sportsmanship, you know. Um, my next most recent loss was I lost to Ritual Beast. So I had some past like so in the past I had beat this guy, okay. And when I beat this guy, we I, I was in another tournament the next day, and um, we both went undefeated. And I was like, yo, let's split, because I want to go home. So we both split first and second place, and we just split it, and both divided it equally. And I jokingly said, yo, I won the tournament since I'm up a match. I thought we were going to share a laugh, but... Um, It he he ended up taking it in the wrong way, and I was just like, you know, I just wanted it to be like a a, a joke, like we could just play around. I wasn't like really meaning I won the tournament, but like technically, since I'm up a match, like kind of sort of I won the tournament, but as a joke, I didn't want any more credit. It was just a joke. So that led to one of his friends not liking me and when we played i lost to him he was playing ritual beast and um 
we didn't shake hands. No, like when I said good game, brother. When he beat me, he didn't say nothing to me. There was no talking. And I'm a grown man. Um, that's not gonna hurt my feelings. Um, you know, I, I've I've been through a lot in my life. I'll say that. So someone not liking me or someone not shaking my hand or someone not telling me good game is not gonna affect me. Like, come on, guys. Like, we're men. You've ever seen Andrew Tate? Like, we're men. No one. Like, come on. That's not gonna hurt me. Like you gotta beat me up, like you gotta beat me with a bat or something to hurt me. Um, maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but like you're not gonna hurt my feelings. But I could tell I soiled a friendship by jokingly saying I won that match. Um, so I lost to the Ritual Beast player. I wasn't mad at him, I was mad at myself because I was supposed to infinite impermanence the protos. So I wasn't mad at myself or sad at myself. I was disappointed. And I was X2 in the OTS championship. So I was like, man, I'm just going to go home early. I scrubbed out. Um, I was really disappointed. Not sad or anything. I was just like, dude, I misplayed. Like, Some people, when they misplay, they get mad. But me, when I misplay, I'm like, dude, like, what's wrong with me? I'm trash, you know. Um, that was pretty much it. I wasn't mad at no one. I just took my loss. And then my other most recent loss was I lost to a Voices voice player. I got too old. And my friend was standing there. He's like, yo, what happened? I was like, I got too old by Voices voice, you know. Um, but I was telling him, I was like, yo, good game, brother. Um, it was a very thought-provoking match. Like, um, I learned a lot from that match. Um, I, I did some crazy plays that kept me alive a lot longer than I should have. So I was like, yo, I, I feel like I did think a lot. I feel like I learned a lot from that match. So, I wasn't mad. Like, I never get mad at my opponent. Unless they, like, hardcore cheated me or something. But, um, I guess we will get into that. So, me and this guy played. And he was playing Snake Eye Fire Kings. And I had understood the Snake Eye stuff. But it's been a while since I played against Fire Kings. And this guy was, like kind of rushing me like hey you know what these cards do you know like speed it up like like not like in those words but like you could just tell and I was like okay this guy's kind of smug you know uh, that made me want to beat him somehow I end up beating him game one game two we um we get into a simplified game state. He super polymerizations my two Tempai Dragons, but I have Sengen Summoning on the field. This is during main phase, and um, he's like, he's like, I, I was like, does it work that way? Because like I put the monsters in the graveyard, and I was like, wait, does it work that way? And I put my monsters back on the field, and then I was like, uh, and he was like, he's like, yes, it works that way. You could ask a judge. I was like, okay, uh, let's ask someone. And then we asked a couple of people, and they're like, no, you can't target those monsters with super. It doesn't target, but like, no, you can't. Super poly those dragons. Uh, you, you can't super poly my tempies under saying something. That's what I, from my understanding, that's what everyone said. So he he was gonna summon Garua. The thing is, is he had three. Uh, he had a Poplar, a Snake Eyes Ash because I had Regeki his Flame Burge, and he brought back some monsters. So he had a Snake Eye Ash, a Poplar, and I think a Snake Eye Oak. And um, I let him take back the super polymerization. Technically, like in a real tournament, because we were in a tournament, but technically, like in a YCS where there's judges watching, you activate a super polymerization. Like, even though you can't target my monsters, it doesn't target. Even though you can't use my monsters as material, you could use yours as material, and therefore, you wasted your super polymerization. Um, I let him take it back. There was another instance where I attack into his Garunix with Transcendence, and... His Garunix had an extra attack bonus because when it came out, it destroyed a monster from the deck or something. And when it destroys a monster from the deck, it gains half the attack. So it was at 37. I swung with Transcendence, and he got like all smug. He's like, oh, send it to the graveyard. Send it to the graveyard. It's... So I sent the Transcendence to the graveyard, but I had already attacked three times. So I just sent the Transcendence, pop Garunix, and I ended up winning that game. But um, that was game one. But... Um, he didn't let me take my attack back. I didn't ask. Like, I didn't even care to take it back. Because I just knew if I could destroy it and I could bring it back, I could pop. That was probably the better play. 
but he was all smug. He's like, "Oh, you misplayed." No, he didn't say that, but like he, you knew what he, you know what he was thinking. So, game three. We, um, I sing and summoning, add Pydra or something. I summon Pydra. He ashes Pydra. I'm like, okay. Ashes in the graveyard. And then I'm like, okay. And then I add. And then he's like, um, and I'm like, yo, I'm unaffected right now. I guess he forgot about saying and summoning again. And he, he, he tries to take it back. And I'm like, nah, put it in the graveyard. He's like, it's not affected, so I can't use it. I was like, no, you can use it, but it's not affected. You can use it. And I was like, you did use it. Put it back in the graveyard. Like, I didn't raise my voice, but, like, I got more serious about it. Because we are in tournament. You know, my, keep in mind, it's only a $5 tournament. I don't care. But, like, yo, and I was like, yo, put it back in the graveyard. You misplayed. And um, he got mad. And I was like, despite everything that happened, good game, brother. He didn't say nothing back. And then uh, he... And uh, so when I... My friend Savon was watching, and he's a friend of both of ours. And I was like, yo, you misplayed. Put it back. He's like, yo, get your boy. I was like, how's that a get your boy moment? You know, when I misplay, I don't get upset. I misplayed with Transcendence. I attacked into his Garunix. I didn't know it was at 3,700. I didn't take it back. I took my L. I still won, though. He tried to take back the Ash. I was like, yo, you misplayed. Put it in the graveyard. I got serious about that. Um... Keep in mind, this guy's bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm over here, like, being tough with guys bigger than me. I'm not saying I'm being tough, but, like, I got to stand my ground. That's the thing about me, man. You're not going to bully me. And he left, and then he told my friend Saban, he's like, oh, he's one of those guys. Not to put anyone under the bus. I'm not saying no names. Um, so I guess that's the start of the video of, like, sore losers in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I had played another guy... And he was playing Labyrinth. And it was round one of a tournament. And I was like, yo, uh, I was like, Dwayne, come sit next to me. Like, you know, like, so me and Dwayne will play Yu Gi Oh! together. And then, like, I saw I won't be alone playing Yu Gi Oh! And he's like, he's like, let Dwayne play wherever he wants to play. I was like, oh, okay. So, like, this guy wants me to play with him by ourselves. I was like, that's fine. Shit, I can stand tall on my own 10 toes, you know? Um, I was like, this guy must not know me. Um, I'm not saying I'm an expert at Yu-Gi-Oh, but like I've been playing consistently and doing my research consistently enough to understand how to play a good match by myself. Um, he was playing Labyrinth, I was playing Tenpai. He was kind of taking a long time. Like I would, like he basically didn't know what my cards did. Like I said, I didn't know what Fire Kings did. So like I understand if you don't know what Tenpai does, but. Part of being a good Yu-Gi-Oh player is knowing what your opponent's cards do so that you can play better around them. If you don't know your opponent's deck, you're at a disadvantage. So, like, he was taking a long time to make his plays. I play Tenpai, I'm just like, summon this, summon this, activate that, summon something, attack for game. I'm really quick with my plays. I let him take his time because it doesn't matter, I'm playing Tenpai. I end up, I believe, 2 owing him, and... After a while, we're just discussing, like, I was like, yeah, you should probably add this to your Labyrinth deck, because, you know, why say Sacramento? You know, we saw um, Lord of the Heavenly Prison, uh, Super Equation Cannon, so I was like, there's a lot of good cards that you could play in your Labyrinth deck. So, I need to take a piss. So, like, I run to the restroom, because it's freaking far from where the shop is at, because it's, it's, it's in a mall, and the restroom's downstairs, so I'm, like, running to the restroom, I gotta take a piss, because I, I, I always bring bottles of water with me. I drink like a whole bottle per match. It's just something to do in the meantime. Um, take a sip right now as we speak. What do y'all guys think about the iFlip cards hat? Um, these are actually custom, obviously. I got a white one and a black one. These are pretty cool for YouTube videos and when I'm out doing card shows. So I am going to be doing a big anime convention. I'm going to be vending at an anime convention uh, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's why I've been a little busy with my uploads. But I wanted to upload a discussion video because these are my favorite types of videos. Ugh, really needed that. So after the match, so I get back and I'm just hanging out with my friends. And I guess they're, they're calling time and they go up to the guy that I beat and they're like, yo. They're like, yo, um, who won? And I guess he told him I won. 
And I'm just chilling with my friends, and he runs up to me. Keep in mind, this guy's bigger than me. Like, already, like I'm a small guy, so everyone's bigger than me, technically. Um, he comes up to me, like, angrily. He's like, yo, next time you don't uh, report, I'm going to take the win. And I'm just like, I mean, that's fair to say, right? But, like, the anger and stuff, like, like, come on, guys. Like, it's only a $5 tournament, and on top of that, you don't do your research, like, how can you expect a top tournament? How can you be mad at, like, how can you be mad when you lose a match when you haven't done the research to, like, earn you the the skill? You know what I'm saying? Like, like if I lose to someone and they're way more skilled than me, I'm not even mad. I'm like, yo, like, you just taught, you just taught me a lot, brother. So, uh, hopefully I don't start no bad blood. So, I was, this is another one. This is what my friend Savon. I'm sure he won't mind me talking about it. He was playing against a hero player. And this hero player had his ghost uh, spooky dogwood on him. And he ended up using my favorite contact and hitting my homie for like 7,000. And he put my homie really low and won in time. And I'm actually friends with both of these guys. I'm obviously more friendly with Savon. Me and Savon go way, way back, like 10, 15 years. Um... But my friend Saban was like, oh, he knew what he was doing. You know, he was trying to take advantage of time and all that. I'm like, yo, relax, brother. Like, it, it's okay, brother. Like, like this, like, this is the game right now. Like, the, the way the time rules are set up, we have dogwoods. We have ancient fairy dragons. We have lacrimosas. We have ways to burn and heal in Yu-Gi-Oh! to take advantage of the life point system. And obviously, if you're playing Ritual Beast, they're going to dog with you, right? Um, but, and I'm just using that as an example to tell y'all guys, like, if you lose in time, or like, unless, cause I know why I say Sacramento, this guy side decked for three minutes and pile shuffled. Now, that's another story for another day. I'm not going to get into that. I wasn't there. But, like, if you're playing against a guy and he's side decking for the whole three minutes and then he power shuffles and he's just completely wasting time, in time, then, yeah, maybe it's a problem. But, like, I don't think... My other friend took advantage of the situation. I just think time ran out, and he, he had a dogwood. Like, who wouldn't sign a dogwood against Ritual Beast? Um, so my friend said I got a little upset, and I was just talking to him. I was like, man, don't worry about it. Like, it's, it's the way the time is designed, we're going to take advantage of it. Me, you, whoever, you know? So i was just tell him, like, like, don't be mad at the player, be mad at the game, you know, that's how the game is designed right now, obviously a lot of people are upset about the time rules, I told people extend the time to 60 minutes per match, people don't like that, um, I don't know, I don't know what to do to solve the time rule, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not paid enough to, to even think about it right now, but guys, let me know what you thought about my discussion video and if anything similar happened to y'all guys. Um, I've made a lot of good friends by showing good sportsmanship and I've lost a lot of friends by showing bad sportsmanship. So it's better to just be a good guy at the end of the day. I appreciate everyone for watching. Thank you for watching. It's currently 12.06 a.m. I'm just cleaning up and... This is my first time recording with my office like this. It's kind of a mess. We got bottles over there, bottles over there. I got uh, my bookshelf here. Uh, this is my girlfriend's Bible. It's just on my bookshelf, so if you're wondering. But, yeah. Appreciate everyone for watching. Let me know what y'all think about these hats. I'm going to start developing merch. Obviously, I don't got such a big fan base where anyone wants my merch. But right now, I'm just, I just keep pushing. You know, regardless if anyone likes my stuff, I just keep pushing. I think that's the most important thing. Thanks for watching, and leave a like if you can.